I appreciate all of you waking up this morning to listen to uh, Uveitis and uh, VEGF. Uh, I don't have any uh, financial interest in the topic, and I really uh, appreciate the opportunity to uh, uh, come and speak with you, and thank you very much to the organizing committee for inviting me. Uh, and these kinds of collaborative exchanges are uh, very educational, and I hope uh, we can all learn from each other during this uh, session. Uh, these will be my uh, objectives. Uh, we're going to talk about um, uh, VEGF. Uh, we're also going to touch on pathogenesis of VEGF. We're going to talk about the uh, management of uveitis, the uh, anti-VEGF and uveitis, and I have some case presentations. Uh, there's a little history around VEGF if you think where we are in 2018 and uh, how it started. Amazingly, it was first hypothesized in, in the, the mid-1900s uh, by Michelson, who uh, thought factor X was involved in retinopathies. And later, Judith Folkman, uh, who uh, described angiogenic factors in uh, tumor uh, uh, angiogenesis. Subsequently, uh, vascular permeability uh, uh, factors were des described by uh, Dvorkin, and uh, in uh, the late 1980s, uh, Genentech and uh, Napoleon Ferrara described uh, VEGF-A. VEGF is very important in um, the pathogenesis of uh, cystoid macular edema and uh, neovascularization. Uh, inhibition of VEGF uh, uh, with anti-VEGF agents, therefore, will uh, favorably affect uh, angiogenic uh, production. And it's widely used in the world of vitreo retina in, in treatments of uh, age-related macular degeneration, diabetes, retinal vein occlusions. And uh, th through uh, angiogenesis and uh, vascular permeability, the inflammatory process is uh, uh, integral. And we know that uh, VEGF is integral in inflammation uh, because many uh, interleukins and uh, cytokines uh, are uh, involved in escalating VEGF and uh, transcription factors are uh, uh, involved in, uh, uh, in the VEGF cascade. Uh, specifically, uh, interleukins such as 1, 6, 8, tumor necrosis factor, TGF beta. And clinically, the aqueous levels of VEGF are, uh, uh, are increased uh, in patients with uh, cystoid macular edema. Uh, so we realize that the uh, importance of VEGF in cystoid macular edema, choroidal neovascularization, retinal neovascularization, and in the inflammatory cascades are important, and therefore inhibiting VEGF may have a therapeutic role. In broad strokes, the general management of uveitis would include these steps, controlling inflammation, uh, preventing vision loss through uh, uveitic sight-threatening complications, alleviating uh, pain and discomfort, and treating the underlying cause of uveitis. And typically, we use steroids as a mainstay of treatment, and those that require longer steroid treatments for recurrent chronic disease, we use uh, uh, steroid sparing agents, and intravitreal agents have become part of this uh, uh, treatment paradigm. So uh, monoclonal antibodies were first uh, described, uh, uh, Avastin uh, particularly, in the use of metastatic colon cancer, and uh, now uh, Avastin is uh, widely used in ophthalmology um, along with uh, the on-label agents, uh, ranibizumab and uh, uh, aflibercept. And the history is uh, amazing over the uh, last 20 years. So in terms of uh, complications, we, we know that uh, uh, coronal vascularization is an important site-threatening complication in, in uveitis. And studies have shown uh, that uh, anti-VEGF can reduce uh, uh, neovascularization. And the, 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 the studies have demonstrated efficacy 
and also safety profiles. Uh, and many of these uh, studies in uveitis are uh, retrospective case uh, studies uh, that show the, the benefit of uh, VEGF for coronary vascularization secondary to uveitis. The, uh, the effects of the VEGF agents tend to be short-lived, similar to our experiences in other diseases like AMD. And uh, subretinal fibrosis uh, occurs more commonly in these patients. And uh, the side effect profile is more favorable than using uh, intravitreal steroids. In terms of cystoid macular edema, there are many uh, uh, case uh, series that have shown a beneficial effect for CME. And typically these eyes uh, are treated uh, with anti-VEGF agents when the inflammation is quiet. So, so there's a meta-analysis that shows 52, 52 eyes that uh, positively responded to uh, anti-VEGF agents and another uh, study of 29 eyes <clears throat> which showed a, a positive uh, effect of anti-VEGF agents for uveitic CME. It's important to mention that injecting VEGF can sometimes have a paradoxical effect and cause inflammation in the eye. That is a drug-induced uveitis that uh, occurs and the, the possible explanations around this uh, may be due to the the VEGF as a, a medication that might have contamination in it, or uh, more likely the formation of uh, antibodies to the uh, immunogenicity of the VEGF molecules, or perhaps uh, uh, impurities or contaminants in the syringes that are used, like silicone droplets or impurities in the packaging. So just as a caution, sometimes the intent is to reduce macular edema or, or secondary inflammation, but you get a reverse uh, phenomena. The Prometheus study uh, showed uh, very nicely uh, in, a, in a prospective trial that ranibizumab had positive efficacy and safety for the treatment of macular edema in uncommon causes, and uveitic CME was one of these causes, and the uh, ranibizumab showed greater treatment, treatment effect at month two, and this effect uh, was achieved uh, for the one-year duration of the study. Now, similarly, this uh, review uh, uh, study paper uh, on uh, anti-angiogenic therapy uh, showed a beneficial effect of uh, anti-VEGF and CME. Uh, and the authors, interestingly, uh, had a, a controversy about whether the agent should be used as an adjunct to anti-inflammatory medications uh, or as a standalone treatment. Cases that I want to present highlighting the benefits of anti-VEGF. I have three cases for you to see, and I think this will put together the, uh, the clinical aspects. The first case is a 60-year-old male with idiopathic retinal vasculitis. He presented with a blurred vision in, in both eyes and uh, floaters in his left eye due to uh, retinal vasculitis. His acuity was 20 uh, over 20 in, in both eyes, and his pressures were uh, 19, 21. And his examination showed uh, vitreous inflammation, disc swelling, retinal vasculitis uh, confirmed angiographically, disc neovascularization, and vitreous bleeding. And uh, this is his uh, wide field angiography imaging, which shows the uh, hyperfluorescent changes at the optic nerve head. And uh, you can see the, the uh, the PRP pattern that was placed to help control the uh, non-perfusion and uh, angiogenesis, but there was still persistent leakage from the disc neovascularization, which then I controlled with uh, intravitreal uh, uh, anti-VEGF treatments. The second case is a 27-year-old uh, female with uh, multifocal choroiditis, and uh, uh, she presented with blurry uh, vision, 20-20 uh, in, in both eyes. Uh, pressures were 19 and 21, and her findings were uh, uh, typical of multifocal choroiditis with trace inflammatory cells in the vitreous, quite a bit of peripapillary fibrosis. Her workup was negative. I, I treated her with uh, prednisone and methotrexate. And uh, while she had a quiescent eye without visible inflammatory cells, she developed macular edema that you can see on this OCT. And uh, I, I decided to try uh, intravitreal VEGF. Uh, to control that macular edema. This is her wide field angiogram. You can see the multifocal spots and the, and the pooling of the uh, fluorescein dye in the macular area. 
So the uh, uh, VEGF treatment was very beneficial in controlling the macular edema. Uh, the next uh, third case is a very complicated case of a sympathetic ophthalmia. The patient had multiple retinal surgeries uh, for a retinal, uh, uh, retinal detachment in the setting of trauma and uh, developed uh, sympathetic ophthalmia in his left eye, in, in his sympathizing right eye, sorry. And we treated him with uh, local steroids, including uh, Kenalog, uh, Ozerdex. We implanted a Retacert. He was treated systemically with prednisone and uh, methotrexate and Remicade infusions. He developed cataract and underwent cataract surgery. He was managed medically for his glaucoma. And he had extensive uh, subretinal and peripapillary fibrosis. And around this fibrosis, he developed choroidal nevascularization with bleeding. And you can see in this uh, wide field montage the uh, multifocal Dellen Fuchs spots and the uh, fibrosis around the optic nerve. And in, in the macula, there's uh, a faint sense of bleeding, which is dark on the uh, angiographic images to the right. So I treated him with a series of uh, anti VEGF treatments to control the um, uh, choroidal vascularization and macular edema. And you can see the OCT shows improvement in the thickening. Uh, with reduction of edema and uh, resolution of the CNVM process, but heavy resultant scarring. So in, in summary, we've talked a little bit about the background of VEGF, the role that VEGF has in the inflammatory cascade, the management principles of uveitis, the benefit of beneficial role of anti-VEGF therapy in uveitis, and we, rev we reviewed three clinical presentations uh, to highlight these points. And these are my references. Thank you.